Welcome Rich Hoops Pod fans. John's reports, Kyrie Irving has reached out to Laker star LeBron James in attempts to see if James would come to Dallas. Irving is a free agent this offseason. Is that even real? How could that happen? Well, Chris Haynes says the maps were one step ahead. Apparently, they were about to make a formal trade offer for LeBron. Right before L.A. made all their trades to get D.U. Low, Rui, Jared Vanderbid. Well, pick the phone back up, Dallas, because Kiri's making moves. So let's see how this trade would actually go down. LeBron makes about 47 million bucks next season. So Dallas has to move a ton of salary. The most straightforward deal is the Mavors get LeBron James for Davis. Burton's? Tim Hardaway Jr. and Maxi Kleber, three established veterans, but not a single star. Does L.A. want that? No, LeBron is their leader. They thought Anthony Davis would take over by now. He's not that guy, pal. A.D. is inconsistent, never healthy, and not an alpha. They don't get that kind of guy. All they get is death. They flip one aging player for two solid role players. In a bad contract? No, there is a more realistic trade. L.A. would tear this thing down if this actually happens. The Mavericks get LeBron, the Lakers get Davis Burtons, Tim Hardaway Jr. for salary, Josh Green, and Jaden Hardy. Two very good young players. People outside of Dallas don't know Hardy established himself down the stretch last year. But then, the Blazers get Anthony Davis. For use of circuits, for salary, and for Nee Simmons, and the number three pick for Scoot Henderson. Do not fool yourself. It will... LeBron goes, they're not building around AED, so they flip into Portland. For Scoot, this is the next Star Lakers. It's the trade Damian Lillard has prayed for for 10 years. AD is the perfect co-star. He's a great fit as a front court player with him and great defensively. I'm not even sure Lakers fans would hate this. For the first time, let's be honest, LeBron looked old in the playoffs. Maybe it's finally time to move on. And this is a blessing in disguise. Scoots and Bay Cup is a young Russell Westbrook or a prime Derrick Rose. They don't have draft picks to build around Scoot, but L.A. will always be attractive to free agents and the Lakers have a ton of cap space coming up. Having a young, cheap star like Scoot is a cheat code in this upcoming CBA. It's going to be really hard to win with big salary guys in the future, so L.A. can attract two max free agents to pair with Scoot after two or three years but there's something LeBron doesn't want us to know about. This whole thing is actually L-A-G-M, trying to force the Lakers' front office to get Kiri. LeBron wants him in L.A., but he doesn't have that power anymore. On every team LeBron's been on, he could call the shots, but that all changed. Summer of 2020. 1. The Lakers had just got bounced in the first round by Phoenix and big changes. We're coming. L-A-G-M. Had a trade on the table for Buddy Heald and Miles Turner. DeMar DeRozan was a free agent in San Antonio. Talks got so advanced, DeMar thought it was done. Then something happened. No one saw it coming. I'm asleep one morning. I get a call and he said, they just made the trade for us. I thought the deal was done for you, the other Lakers. I'm confused that I'm looking at my phone. Like, damn, that did happen. Well, I guess that's out the window. Like, you know what I mean. Because my, in my mind, my, that was the only option for me to go to. The real deal was done for DeMar to go back home to L.A. Then he went and had back, to back all-star seasons. But no, LAGM stepped in and made them get Russell Westbrook. We all knew it was a dumb trade at the time. Ended up being a disaster. <laughs> Rob Palinka, the Lakers' gene, was like, I knew this was dumb and I had good trains lined up. Never again will you tell me how to do my job. But LeBron just can't help himself. At the trade deadline this year, a report leaked that he was an immense proponent of making a deal. For Kiri Irving, he'd be the guy who ditched him in Cleveland then ruined every locker room he's been in since then. But the Lakers said, no thanks, LeBron. We're calling the shots. They brought in Rui Hachimura for second-round picks, turned Ross into depth. That took them all the way to the conference finals. And at the time, a report said L.A. was no longer interested in Kiri. They're going to run it back. Then they got swept by Denver. The games were super competitive, if you remember, that series. But they got horrible point guard play from D'Lo. LeBron was looking at a D every night, being passive, not dominating against Jokic. And he's like, you know what, I need someone to rely on. Someone who can get a big bucket in crunch time. Then he looked under the basket in game four. And there he was, 
Kyrie attending his second Laker game of the playoffs. So in a desperate move, LeBron went to the media and said, I'm thinking about retiring. Maybe that's Will Force the Lakers front office. They'll get scared. But to put even more pressure on his cam, apparently has leaked this story to Shams. It is well known that Shams gets information from Clutch Sports, LeBron's agency. Another reporter who got the story was Chris Haynes from Blazer. Report. But who is missing? Adrian Wojnarowski, the biggest NBA reporter there is. Isn't it weird that Woj isn't reporting about this? Actually, it's not because Clutch hates Woj. It is well known. Woj does not get Clutch info. That is how we know this story leaked from LeBron and Clutch. LeBron is obviously trying to scare the Lakers into doing what he wants. If you don't trade for Kiri, maybe I'll demand a trade to Dallas. But of course, that is not going to happen. LeBron in Dallas. Because of the new CBA, it would have to be LeBron, Kiri, Luka, and all minimum contracts. And by the way, Dallas's big problem is defense. Do you think LeBron fixes that? They already have Luka and Kiri to handle the ball. This makes no sense. The Mavs don't even have their 20-24 draft pick to get Brawny. Obviously, they could trade into the draft, but it's not there yet. Now, people are going to hate on LeBron for this, and maybe rightfully so. But they're forgetting that Michael Jordan did this exact same thing before social media. So what? Didn't know about it. The Bulls had not won a chip in 1991, and NG had a wish list of teammates here. Wanted to get, but GM Jerry Krause did a different trade. NG hated it. Straight upset. I'm going, tell owner Jerry Ryan's dwarf when I get back, it's either me or GM Jerry Krause. If he wants to keep Krause fine, I'll tell him to trade me. But that's it. It's got to stop here. The G was fed up. It's what happens when you have a star player that does not resect the gene. But Krause actually did make the right trades and the Bulls did stand up to Michael Jordan and it led to six championships. So you don't blame LeBron for thinking he knows better than Rob Blinka because Rob was an agent for years, and LeBron's been orchestrating things for two decades. But Lid decided the gene was fired, so they have to kill this latest obvious trade attempt to get Curie. So look, uh, this story, uh, let's be honest, is kind of a conspiracy theory by me because I don't have exact proof about what LeBron's doing. All the signs point there, though. But one thing we do know for sure is that an NBA ref was using a Twitter burner account all this season. It got so bad that NBA took him off the finals, but the story behind the whole thing is crazy. 